Hey everybody, welcome back to our virtual classroom. I'm Joe Carswell and this lesson is going to take a lot of our math skills that we've learned and we're going to apply them to some problems that are related to a set of plans. We're going to take that set of plans, break it down, set up these problems and solve it. You also have an assignment available to you that will carry you through some other problems. So hopefully this process of me going through a couple of these problems with you will help you understand how to get through those other problems. Let's get right into it. In this question or this scenario, we have to solve for area and we don't have a simple length times width area to figure. We have several surfaces. We have a staircase that we want to cover with carpet. I'll go ahead and read this word problem. We'll look at the illustration, call out some dimensions and then uh, plug in numbers and solve for it. So how many square feet of carpet are needed to cover the staircase pictured here from the first to the second floor? Make sure to include all landings, steps, and the risers. And at the end, we're going to add 10% to the total to compensate for folds and waste of material when installing. Let's break this problem down. We have several surfaces to identify and luckily we have multiples of equal size surfaces. So we have three things we have to calculate. One is going to be our stair treads. That's the flat part that your foot will use to climb the stairs. We also have risers. That's going to be the vertical area that is in front of each tread. And then we have a large area, which we're going to call the landing. All of this needs to be covered with the same material and we have to figure area for each one of these. It, keep in mind that we have different multiples of each surface area. So our stairs in this case, or our treads, are going to be a count of 14. So we will calculate our stairs and multiply that number of one single tread area by 14. And it just so happens that our stairs are three feet, five inches wide. They're also, each tread is 11 inches deep. So we can multiply our three foot five, uh, which we can convert to 41 inches to make this problem go easier. And we can multiply that times our 11 inches, that's length times width, that's 41 times 11 inches. That gives us 451 square inches. If we multiply 451 square inches, per tread times the total number of treads, which is 14, we will come up with our total square inches for all of our treads at 6,314 square inches. Next up, we need to calculate surface area for our risers. We have a different number of risers than we do treads. And if you see on the illustration, there's one riser at the very top beyond the top step. That is going to be, that's going to carry up to our next level. And we also have one just below the landing at the top step of the first run of stairs. So our total count for our risers is going to be 16. They're all equal and we can use this same width measurement of three foot five inches or 41 inches for the width of our risers. The height of our risers are called out on the drawing as seven and three quarters inches tall. So we can multiply that 41 inches times seven and three quarters inches to arrive at 317.75 square inches. We can then take that 317.75 square inches, multiply it by our 16 risers to get a total of 5,084 square inches for all the surface area of all 16 risers. The last area we need to calculate is going to be the area of the landing. This is fairly simple. It is a space that is three foot five by seven foot two. We can multiply these two numbers together, length times width, to arrive at the area of 3,526 square inches. Now it's time to add up all of these areas. Our stair treads were a total of 6,314 square inches. We can add that to our riser area of 5,084 square inches. And then last, we'll add our landing area of 3,526 square inches. This is going to be a total of 14,924 square inches. Since we want this measurement to be in square feet for our answer, we can take our square inches of 14,924, divide that by 144 square inches per square foot to arrive at 103.64 square feet. Our exact measurement to cover all areas here 
is going to be 103.64 square feet. But if you remember in our word problem, we wanted to add 10% to this measurement. That's a very easy adjustment to make. We can multiply this square footage measurement by 1.1, and that's gonna give us 114 square feet. This is going to account for any folds in the carpet or any waste that we need to make when we're wrapping it around this irregular area. It's interesting to note that, um, especially in my lifetime, uh, carpet used to be spelled out or specced in square yards. It's become a more modern unit to use to be square feet now. And I believe that's happened because the trend is to compare different materials, whether that's carpet, hardwoods, laminates, to compare them. And so they put them in the same units that most of those materials are spelled out in, which is square feet. This problem is dealing with trying to figure area for an irregular shape. We don't always have a simple rectangle, simple circle, simple triangle. We might have a shape that has to be broken down into more simple shapes that we understand how to calculate. In this case, we have a garage that we're trying to figure the square footage for, and we can uh, divide this into two rectangles, very regular shapes that we can then calculate separately and then add them together. The word problem asks, what is the total square footage of this two-car garage? If you notice, there's a notation on this drawing that says all exterior walls and interior walls are built with two by four studs, 16 on center, and it says, unless noted otherwise. So unless there's a notation on that specific wall, we're going to assume that all of these walls are two by four, which would be made with a three and a half inch deep piece of lumber. If it's a two by six wall, which there are some called out if you see on the sides here, those would be a five and a half inch piece of lumber, which is basically the depth of a two by six. To figure the area for this irregular two car garage, we're going to break it into simple rectangles. We have part A and part B. And what we can do is calculate for part A separately than part B, and then combine the two at the end. One thing to mention is that this is not always a perfect process. If you notice here the, the dashed circle, we have a little bit of a conflict. In this close-up, you see that to draw a perfect rectangle, we're going to interfere with one of the wall placements that's, that's here. And when we're doing square footage calculations, I've figured this particular uh, interference here is less than one square foot. So we are going to ignore this problem in our equation and just consider that to be a close enough calculation to make a perfect rectangle to not have to deal with it. Here we'll solve for part A and part A we have to look at all of these measurements called out with the red ovals. And you have three dimensions for the length of this room or this area, which are going to be four foot, four and a half inches. We have six foot and one half inch. And then we have eight foot, one and one half inches. We need to combine all of those measurements. And if you see where the dimensions called to, they call to the inside of these walls. That's very important here in this problem that we are making sure that we're calculating only the interior surface area of these walls. Anything on the inside of the walls is going to become our calculation. If the dimensions call out outside of the wall, then we have to subtract the, the, the thickness of that wall from our dimension before we can use it. Now we're gonna add these three dimensions together to get our length. Uh, four foot, four and a half inches plus six foot, ten and a half plus eight foot, one and a half equals 19 feet, four and a half inches. Now we multiply by 12 feet to arrive at our square footage of 232.5. Now we need to solve for part B. We have length times width and our length here is called out as 21 feet. If you look closely at this measurement, the dimension lines reach to the outside of the left wall and the right wall. So we need to subtract the thickness of these two walls from our overall dimension. That's going to be three and a half inches on one side, two by four wall, and then five and a half inches on the other side, a two by six wall. That sets up our length to be 21 feet minus three and a half inches minus five and a half inches. On our width of our wall, that's called out as 10 feet, but we need to subtract the south wall thickness, which is three and a half inches. So that's gonna be 10 feet 
minus three and a half inches. So we're going to put that into our equation, then we can solve for it. So 21 feet minus three and a half inches minus five and a half inches is gonna be 20 feet, three inches. And we can multiply that times our 10 feet minus three and a half inches, which is going to be nine feet, eight and a half inches. So these two numbers multiplied together are going to give us our square footage of 196.59. To solve this area problem, we're going to take part A and add it to part B. And we know the totals of both of those. So we're taking two numbers of square footage, adding them together. Part A is 232.5 square feet, and part B is 196.59 square feet. We add those two numbers together to get a total square footage of 428.36 square feet. When you're calculating square footage for an entire building, this is the process that you're going to do. You're going to have to take that very irregular shape, a combination of a lot of rooms, hallways, and spaces, and create very simple components that you can uh, solve for separately and then combine them all in the end. So what we've done here is a very simple step that you would multiply and combine to do a much bigger problem to solve. And remember, when your dimensions call out to the wrong side of the wall, you're going to have to remove the thickness of that wall from the length or width dimension before you can do your area calculations. This area problem is asking us to, number one, define the square footage of a specific space, and then number two, to call out the number of materials of a specific size that would fit in that space. So the question here is, how many four by four tiles will it take to cover the floor of this butler's pantry? We have a couple of dimensions to call out to calculate the square footage to start with. Our dimensions are called out for this room here in red, and we have a length of six foot nine inches. If you notice, those dimensions are not inside the room, they're called out uh, extended beyond it. This is not unusual for dimensions. You always look for the extension lines to point to the place that they're referring to. So if, if we look at this six foot nine, we realize that it is calling out to the inside of the room on the lower uh, extension line, but on the upper extension line, it's calling out to the far side of the wall. So once again, we need to subtract the thickness of that wall to come to our dimension. As for the width of this room, it is called out at six feet even, and both of those extension lines are drawing to the inside of the room, so we can use that without any modification. So given those dimensions, let's set up our equation. So our length is going to be six foot nine minus the dimension of that wall, which is three and a half inches. And we're going to multiply that times the width of our room, which is six feet. So that's going to bring us to six foot five and a half inches times our six feet. Let's convert both those numbers to inches. That gives us 77 and a half inches times 72 inches, which gives us a total square inch measurement of 5,580. We need the number of tiles that will fit in this room. We know the total square inches, so we can take one tile, calculate the square inches of that, and divide it into our 5,580 to arrive at the number of tiles. So we have a tile that's four inches by four inches. And if we do our length times width, we can arrive at the area of each tile to be 16 square inches. Now that we know the total square inches for one tile, we can divide our total square area, which is 5,580 square inches, by that 16 square inches per tile to get our total tile number of 348.75, which is really 349 tiles if you're ordering full tiles. It's not often that you will ever be able to order the exact amount of tiles. They're going to come in boxes. It could be boxes of 100. There's going to be a specific count per box. And so you're going to have to order a certain number of boxes. So make sure when you order them that you have enough to at least cover 349 tiles. You're probably going to end up with some extra. When I've done tile work and you're cutting tiles, mistakes are very common. So you always need some extra. This video is a production of Trade Skills U, all rights reserved. If you provide instruction in the construction trades and have a need for videos like these, please contact us at tradeskillsu.com.